um, chartered. And so we are pleased today, we'll give you uh, an overview of the process that we went through, um, a general description of the goals and the objectives, and then we'll talk about what's next and how do we implement as a practical way, how do we start implementing um, the recommendations from the task force. So now I'll turn to um, Kate, who will talk more about the process. Great. And Carol, uh, if you wouldn't yeah. mind going to the next slide, that'd be wonderful. Okay, so I'm supposed to be going to the next slide, and why is it not? Here we go. Okay. Is this, is this correct? <laughs> yes, it's great. Um, well, thank you all for allowing us to be here. And Carol, that was a lovely introduction, by the way. I am glad that you find the vision energizing and exciting because I think you'll see from Linda and Doug in my faces that we all find it the same as well. So we're glad to be here. Um, so <clears throat> to give you a backdrop of how this all came about, and I'm, I'm sure some of you all remember this as well. So it's probably just a refresher for some folks. Um, in late 2021, session asked for the strategic visioning task force to be formed and the nominating committee sprung into action as they always do <laughs> and they found a slate of folks um, including the, those of us on the call linda doug and i and um in addition we had our chair who is shizuko say who um we might mention several times today as uh someone who is just such an amazing leader on this journey. And we really enjoyed having her as our leader. She was um, unable to attend today due to travel. But uh, as as I like to say, she's always with us when we talk about the, the strategic vision. So Shizuka is always somewhere around. Um, so like I said, Doug is Doug as well as on um, Steve Burns, Bethany Frick, Melissa Kellis, Linda, Scott Northrup, myself, and then Clint Kelly, who is um, acting as an advisor as well. Um, so they, they, those were the members of the task force. And of course, um, uh, David and Denise were serving in ex officio roles, which doesn't diminish the amount that they contributed because they were just tremendous and terrific on this whole journey. Um, so that that was the group that worked together. And honestly, just thinking about the this, the team of us together, I'm brought back to all of the many meetings we had and the many very deep discussions we had in the, along this journey, um, because it was quite a, a long journey to get to this point. Um, and we are going to go into some of the the, the different processes and, and methods that uh, that we that we use to get to the point of understanding what our strategic vision will do. And I'll get into that. But um, wanted to tell you who we were first. Um, so session chartered us in um, and I'm going to read the session charter out loud. Um, and it was a very good defining uh, mandate for our team going forward. So we were chartered to discern God's vision for our life and ministry as a congregation in Christ and to develop in conversation with the congregation and the Holy Spirit and by early 2023, a specific set of goals and recommended next steps for Bradley Hills PC to take over the next five years to live out its mission and its vision in being the church Christ is calling us to be. If anyone has any questions, feel free, but otherwise I'll move on to how we how we went about our journey. Great. Um, so as I mentioned, we we were we started to pull together pull our group together. And um when we first began our journey, um I think we engaged at the beginning as I said, in a number of meetings where we thought a lot about and talked a lot about how we would accomplish our mission, the strategy that we, we would take. We talked a lot about um, our own experiences, our own, our own curiosities, our own motivations. And so in the very beginning, I, I, before we got into the sub, I would, what I would say sort of the the substantive actions that we were we were taking to to understand and have the conversation that we were chartered to have by session, um, the slate of folks that I mentioned, we 
we really dug in and I think thought about what each of us could bring to the table and really came together as a team to make sure that we we understood where where all of us were coming from, brought together all of these different perspectives, which were part of the Bradley Hills congregation. So that was definitely part of the charter. Um, and then we were able to launch into um, more strategic processes and actions that would allow us to, to get um, a broader feedback that we needed to do our job. So we went into our listening campaign. So we listened to the VHC fam PC family. Um, we used a, um, a congregational assessment tool, which we called the CAT. Um, and we also did interviews with lay ministry teams, which I personally enjoyed greatly. I thought those were just amazing. Um, it's wonderful to talk to members of our lay ministry here. If, I'm sure people in on this call are parts of the lay ministry, and I compliment all of you because um, the spirit and the points of view that you get talking with our lay ministry is just wonderful. Um, and then we did some conversations with different focus groups that we had over the over the course of several months that we just, we had, you know, essentially scheduled meetings or opportunities for folks from different parts of the congregation to have conversations with us if they were interested. Um, so I wanted to tell you all some of the, some of the feedback that we got, uh, strengths. So as you might imagine, there were a lot of strengths that were identified. We're a high energy, high satisfaction, um, uh, a congr congregation that it says that we are a high energy uh, church and there's high satisfaction that's driven by exceptional worship services, music programs, education programs, outstanding pastors and staff, including church leadership who are representative of the community and a caring church community. So I'm sure none of this surprises any of you. It didn't surprise any of us. Um, and we also heard in our campaigns um, several areas for improvement. Um, and these were ones that we we took very seriously and, and they did echo or come through in, in a lot of different areas. So we were really glad we did this listening, but um, areas that we identified were more emphasis on the spiritual needs of young adults and young families, further improvements of technologies that facilitate a hybrid um, a hybrid worship or a hybrid participation in the church, so in person and online. More in person connectional opportunities, especially for newer members of the congregation, and a need for volunteers and a coordination across lay ministry. <clears throat> um, and I mentioned that we had done um, a CAT, the congressional assessment tool, which um, Linda, this is this is the one that the 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 survey company was called Holy Cow, right? That's right, Holy Cow Consulting. It's it was delightful. They they did a lovely job. Holy Cow exclamation point um, does consulting for um, for churches across the country, and they they were great. Um, they but they did a congressional assessment tool, and so they surveyed for us. And the top four goals that we identified from our survey respondents, um, I list them here. Developing it, or to develop and implement a comprehensive strategy to reach new people and incorporate them into the life of the church, to create more opportunities for people to form meaningful relationships, for example, small groups, nurtured friendships, shared meals, um, make necessary changes to attract families with children and youth to our church, and strengthen the process by which members are called and equipped for ministry and leadership. And so those were their top four goals. And um, I think you can you, you can start to see some of the, the linkages between areas of improvement and goals starting to come. And you're going to hopefully see across our strategic visioning, all of these things linked throughout. Mm -hmm. So the next slide, Carol, if yeah. you would. I, would. I would just like to add that you can see through these four top goals, uh, the impact of COVID, <laughs> right? As we were doing this, survey we were just coming back in person um and so uh one of the things that came out in the survey was that you know we we people that had been with the church a long time still felt connection but people that were relatively new to the congregation uh they were not feeling as connected and so you can kind of see that all these goals are about connectionalism and uh and getting people to work together bringing people along to help them 
participate and making sure we're doing our own outreach to the community. So I just think that we, we should keep that in mind that that was, uh, I, when we did the survey, when we talked to people, I think those are all things that were top of mind and that is reflected here pretty, pretty well. Thank you. So another part of the work that we did um, was then to turn to looking at the mission, vision, and value statements. So the mission and vision statements had been um, re, I don't want to say just rewritten. Um, it was the previous strategic visioning task force had um, gone through a long process of discernment in, in creating a new mission statement for the church. And we did not, um, you know, we looked to the mission and vision statement as another part of this overall journey of listening and thinking about the direction the church was going by looking at these, um, what we think of as our, our guiding compass, the mission, vision, and value statements um, are even beyond this, the task force recommendations. These are like a foundation or a, a constant current that runs through what is our identity? Um, how do we make decisions? How do we allocate our energy, our resources, our time. So these, um, the mission statement, and I'll I'll go ahead and, and read this um, because it's familiar and this is the same one that we've had for a long time. Bradley Hills Presbyterian Church's mission is to reflect God's gracious love by following Christ's example, to welcome, nurture, heal, and serve. As Doug just said, we saw a lot of threads from all of the uh, information gathering we did during the listening campaign. Those four goals are, are one example of something that we pulled out. And we also saw how goals, strengths, areas that need attention, also um, that, that this part of our mission statement that's so succinct but expresses so much, and I just wanted to highlight, to welcome, nurture, heal, and serve. So this remains you know, our, our mission statement. The vision statement, we envision a vibrant, caring community that draws and energizes people to grow in faith, serving together to make every breath count. Again, when you look at this um, vision statement, it's concise and each, you know, as, as Carol started out, this is an energizing task force report that this congregation is, is vibrant. And indeed, when we first started meeting as a task force, um, I remember Shizuko asked us to break off into small groups and talk about what does it mean to be a vibrant spiritual community? And so these are the kinds of exercises that we went through in addition to reading, you know, what does that really mean? Um, so we didn't change these, but we used the mission and vision statement as a guiding compass. What we did look at, take a fresh look at, was our values statements. You can move to the next slide where we have our um, value statement and we refer to it as updated. But part of the question that we asked ourselves when looking at our value statement is what makes Bradley Hills special? What is unique about this congregation? And so in a way, this value statement describes what we looked back and, and looked at um, the 50 year anniversary of Bradley Hills, the report that talked about the whole history of the church and the things that have made this church unique and special. We also looked at the strengths that I, we identified through um, the surveys, the responses, things that we heard from people, the idea of upholding as a part of our foundation, many of the strengths and also hopes for the future. When we interviewed lay ministries, we would ask for those of you who were in lay ministry meetings where you might've devoted an entire meeting to talking to us about your big hopes and dreams for the church in the future and the best things about the church that you really um, loved and that we wanted to to keep. So the value statement, um, if you, it's very similar in a lot of ways to the one that we had before. There are, we've consolidated, there are fewer um, individual values, but 
it's a little longer. When we looked at other value statements that may, um, you know, they can be a little longer. And so this, what do you think about what, what is the value statement and what is the purpose of having it? It's really something that defines and underpins who we are, um, who we're called to be, how we do what we do. So we, we have specific goals and recommendations and even some tactical or pragmatic things to do that come out of the strategic visioning task force. But all of this and the decisions that we make, you know, we think of the mission, vision, and values as our guiding compass um, that unify across the church and its different operations, um, our identity, and who we are. I'll pause here. Rather than reading the value statement, I'll just pause for a few moments so you can read the slide. Are there any questions at this point before I go to um, an overview of the goals and objectives? Anybody have questions? I'll wait till later for my questions. <laughs> I'm there's paper copies out there. Yeah, um, there there are paper copies of the of the uh, task force report. Are there not? available yes there are there are um paper copies that i think were they may still be in the narthex um where you find sermons they and if they are not there um let me know and i'll ask elizabeth to put more they did have some paper copies and this is also yeah see it's also can. available online okay great And to that point, I would encourage anyone who hasn't read the, the report itself, you know, all this slide deck comes straight from that report. Um, but I'm, we're hoping that this will um, whet your appetite to read the whole report. It provides a lot more of the history of the church, much more detail about the process we went through, more information that came out of the um, listening campaign, um, and a lot more detail about the goals and objectives. So this is sort of a sneak preview. Um, okay, so, and we can take questions at the end, but yeah. we, out of this, we identified five strategic goals. And these are to connect, celebrate, nurture, serve, and steward. Some of these goals really naturally align with um, different functions of the church. We have, you know, connection, strengthening connectional relationships within the congregation and surrounding communities. Something that was really important was our connection through mission work, service projects, and how we have connected over the years with going beyond the walls of Bradley Hills as well. So within and uh, looking at surrounding communities. Celebrate. So this, you can see this is focused on joyful worship, uh, welcoming, you know. So the we have some specific recommendations around worship and celebration in gratitude for God's grace and love. And this point about gratitude also, we thought about, again, um, of course, our, we are a Christian congregation. And why? what makes this place different from other places in the world? You know, that this is a church and that we're here um, and that what we do is in gratitude for God's grace. So um, it's just an important point that we wanted to in, incorporate into all of the language around goals and objectives. The nurture um, pertains really, as you can see, to Christian education and spiritual growth opportunities. And this 
idea of joy, joyful worship, connection, engagement, bringing more people, um, getting more involvement across the entire congregation. And serve, um, this has, you know, pertains also to mission work and engagement through our ministry and interfaith programs, looking um, beyond the walls of Bradley Hills. And then steward, we think about stewardship, um, caring for God's creation. So it, this is a broadly stated goal that as you get into the objectives, you can really break down specific recommendations that we have. But this slide just gives the overarching strategic goals. As you read through the report, you'll see the structure of the report is um, the goals and underneath each goal are one to three objectives. So you can move to the next slide. And the bulk of the report, so when you do go online or pick up the report, you'll see that the heart of the report, many pages are devoted to the objective. So there's Carol holding it up. So the, the report itself, um, so this one slide, boils down what is described in much more detail in the report with many more practical um, recommendations that came from the task force. And so I just wanted to summarize it here, but invite you to really read through and study um, the report itself. So under the goal of connection, this is another you know, we have specific recommendations about how do you knit the congregation together and engage people, as Doug mentioned, particularly people who may be new to the congregation and haven't formed those connections yet, or those who may feel on the periphery. So we want to connect. Um, and again, very specific recommendations about that as well. When we look at our worship services, um, an important point that came up again and again was that we enjoy diversity, um, variety, diversity in music and arts, and that through the pandemic, like here we are with, I'm, I'm at home, I'm able to, thanks to Carol setting up this equipment, we're able to all come together from wherever we are, Florida, <laughs> wherever you happen to be zooming in. And so through the pandemic, we realized again, how wonderful it is to be able to go beyond the walls of Bradley Hills and reach people and allow for engagement um, through technology. In Christian education and spiritual growth, um, we found while there, there has been historically and there still is a desire for a focus on bringing in you know, young people, young families and nurturing spiritual growth from a young age, there is a desire and an appetite for that to continue lifelong. And that's something that is has been a part of this church and people still want at every stage along the spiritual journey, the life journey, um, opportunity across all generations. Another point that came up again and again in terms of um, practical wishes was that we would have more opportunity for hands-on service where you're really collaborating, walking alongside people um, within the church and outside of the church. And that the social justice programs that we've been involved in that have um, as, as a part of our life as Christians together are so important to people in the congregation. And so those opportunities to um, really be present and tangible and concrete and getting to know other people seem to be um, a common theme across our conversations. And of course, stewardship. Um, we need to secure the financial future of the church and maintain these facilities, caring for God's creation, caring for our own, you know, physical plant and our programs, that it's a it's a sort of a basic need if you will, but it's an important part of our overall vision over the next five years. How do we sustain, how do we uphold, um, and how do we continue to grow? So again, this is a very uh, general description of what, when you get into the report, several pages are devoted to 
um, specific steps that we recommend and specific ways of approaching this. Um, so with that, I'll pause. Are there any questions and then turn it to Doug to talk about what's next. I, I'm curious about how you, what process you use to prioritize to, you know, have them. What's the conflict? How, how did it, how did it work that you could prioritize? And to what extent did resources enter into your decision? Well, I think in terms of prioritizing and thinking about what would rise to the top as a goal or an objective we went through a number of exercises, small group discussions, different analysis, looking at it, looking at all of the, if you wanna say qualitative data that we had, the interpretive guidance from Holy Cow Consulting. Um, we took information from our interviews and did different schemas. And you know, we worked with all of this information in a variety of ways and started to see common points that came up again and again. We did our own um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and, and threats, if you will, analysis. And so as we took over the course of several months and through our own taking it back and praying together through prayer alone, um, reflection, there was really a lot of time spent in devotion, prayer, uh, spending time reflecting by ourselves, coming back as a group. And so when you think about the process that we um, went through, it really was a, a spiritual discernment process, um, which is very different. I've worked on a mission, vision, and value statement for a corporate environment. And doing this as a, as a Christian body, communally, um, a lot of our process really turned to prayer. But it also looking at this information from many, many different ways, it became clear that there were these um, priorities. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't, and so you asked about conflict. Um, I really, I don't recall what I would describe as conflict, but there were absolutely um, discussions about you know, it wasn't that we were all in agreement 100% all of the time. So I'll, one example, um, the revised values statement. We spent a lot of time on the wording of the values statement. And we just devoted time. If there was ever something where people had different opinions, different points of view, we wanted to give plenty of time. And we had, you know, we met twice a month for this whole time. Um, and would have in between, we would have emails and collaboration. So if there was ever something where we felt like we really need to discuss this point and come to a consensus, we would just take the time that we needed to do it. So that was a part of the process of, of coming up with these priorities. And thinking about resources, absolutely. Um, when I think of what are resources, you know, human resources, volunteer support for things, financial resources, um, our recommendations and goals are not, they're not listed in order of priority. So when you look at goal number one, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the most important goal. Um, right. All of these goals and objectives were, um, they're, they're listed, but they're not necessarily listed in a hierarchical way. Um, it's, and so we thought about what are the financial resources and the human resources to implement these goals? And, and that's, we, we really didn't feel um, limited. You know, you'll see that our recommendations are not necessarily, um, oh, and here's a good question. Um, th they're not limited by our resources, but we do see in the idea of stewardship that we need to secure the church's financial future. And limitations on resources will, of course, um, or not necessarily limitations, but thinking about what are our resources and how do we engage more people and get more people involved in contributing their time and their energy. Um, that is going to be something, you know, that the church will continue to, to need. Does that answer your question, Carol? 
Yes, yes, yes. And uh, Nancy Silkey had a question about whether you reviewed the previous strategic vision reports. Um, we sure did. Um, we reviewed. Lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We reviewed those reports, um, and we considered, you know, at different times. I think part of how what the like how pra how specific are our recommendations or not? Um, did you know this time? I think we had fewer metrics and um, measurable, kind of achievable sort of metrics. As I recall in the, the past strategic visioning task force report, it was, um, you know, there was a path set out that had really measurable goals for the next five years. And here, this is a vision and we have um, recommendations about what the church should do, but then it's not broken down into the kind of, you know, uh, as, as, I, as I recall, this is a very, very general statement about the differences, but we did, we looked at the work that previous task forces had done for, for example, the mission vision statement um, and decided to just, you know, let that work continue to unfold and not change it. So it, it was a, a good guide for us, but we also didn't feel um, that, that we had to follow a particular, you know, just to think about what makes sense now for, for this task force. And uh, Diane um, asked, did anyone suggest how diversifying uh, music and, and arts would look? Um, were there suggestions for the types of activities that people wanted to diversify? Nature, spirituality, what 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 it would, would it look like? Did you think about that? Yes, for sure. Um, a lot, in fact, a lot of these examples are things that came up in our listening groups, that kind of diversity. Um, nature, for example, you know, using our spaces differently. And I think this is one of the objectives you might see is, you know, how can we incorporate, you know, our, our outdoor worship is something people really love. Um, using the labyrinth, using the physical spaces of the church in new and diverse ways of worshiping. Because I think in our congregation, we have people who love to worship through music. Some people find they are connected to God most when they're surrounded by trees. Other people love just a deep dive in intellectual study of theology. You know, we have so much variety of ways that people love God and worship and grow, that um, this is exactly the kind of thing that this diversifying how you worship is aimed at um, Bible study and different times of day. How do you engage people? And I think for years and years, you know, we think about what time of day, when are people available? When does this um, meet the needs in the congregation? So um, absolutely, Diane, this is exactly the kind of thing that, that we've considered, you know, and um, are recommending. Did, did you have thoughts <clears throat> or ideas as to how we can better uh, move forward with technology? It seems to me since we have so many people now worshiping online, that we need to improve the facility we have in terms of better camera work and, and better sound. And, you know, we have a lot of needs to reach all of the people who are out there throughout the world. I, I would say the, the task force definitely agrees with that. And our recommendation in, um, I, one of the objectives under celebrate and worship and how to connect is exactly uh, that that an an investment of time and energy and resources into um, continuing to improve our technology so that we reach people who want to zoom in like this and also to improve our website to improve other ways that we through um, technology can go beyond the walls of Bradley Hills to reach and connect people in the community and bring them in. Um, yeah. Well, yes, I think that's very important. I would like to add something here. And um, as we had these robust discussions, it, we started to have 
a lot of ideas about how these things could work. But we also had to remember our charter and the name, the title of our group, which is Strategic Visioning Task Force. It's not Strategic Action Task Force, right? And so we actually had to sort of tamp back <laughs> providing specifics. And this had to be presented to session. And session has to make decisions on how we move forward in a lot of these areas. Uh, you know, in consultation with all the lay ministries. And so I'll talk about that in just a minute. But I but I really appreciate everybody asking these specific, like, you know, what is a specific recommendation, how we're going to move forward? We're saying this is what we found when we listened to the congregation, when we did our survey, and when we discussed it and prayed about it. These are the things we came up with. Now it's time to move forward and figure out exactly what that's going to mean for all of us. Yeah, that, that would be my next question, but I know sure. you're going to address it. <laughs> and, yeah. and I think we well, could yeah, move on to the next slide and start talking about um, okay. exactly that. Yes. Yeah, here's a uh, here's a passage that I think the group found inspirational from Isaiah, which is, I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I don't want to imply that our church is a desert <laughs> right but uh you know we have new energy we have new ideas uh and i think uh the top bullet here i have to say linda you covered a lot of these things very well in your overview which is again as we listened as we as we uh got survey information um and as we as we prayed and discussed uh, we want to continue the work of Jesus Christ and solidify and and grow our foundation and while we build on our strengths. I mean, I think that that's sort of a broad way of looking at this. We want to strengthen our relationships. That's within our own congregation, the local community. And what came through very strongly was our interfaith connection with our interfaith partners in our in our building. Uh, further to foster spiritual spiritual growth and also support our staff. I, I mean, that came through that I think during COVID, our staff spent a lot of time all alone in the building <laughs> by themselves, right? And so uh, looking for ways to support, making sure, um, you know, hiring the right staff to do the things we need to do and making, if there's volunteer opportunities to bring them in to help in that space and our infrastructure. And to keep strong, our music programs, our education programs, our mission programs, those were all very positive things. And of course, as Linda mentioned, our youth, nurturing uh, next generation of disciples and, in, and to engage our younger members, right? These are all positive things we want to take what we've got and build on. Uh, in addition, we want to serve communities. That could be outreach, uh, community service, mission, uh, keep and, and communities within our own congregation. And finally, you know, care for God's creation. That could be our building, our property, support for others around the world who are, you, you know, helping on water resources, dealing with pollution and climate change, earth care broadly. All right, let's go to the next slide, please. And as you can see here on the right, I, I just want to point out clearly that, and it reemphasize what Linda said before, is that we don't want to look at the goals and objectives as something that is standalone or is listed in priority. We want to look at them holistically, right? And they're interconnected. I think that's actually a, one of uh, a bit of feedback that we got is some lay ministries feel really siloed. They feel isolated. And we want to build connections between lay ministries so that they can work together to accomplish some of the goals that we have listed. And to that end, session, you know, I'm on session and Kate is on session, and we are reviewing this report, and we have liaisons from session to the individual lay ministries, and uh, there already has, and some of you may be aware of this, we've already started to have those discussions looking at the uh, strategies, the goals, and objectives, and uh, trying to figure out how we can move forward on these things. There are, if you look at the report, there are some short-term goals and there are some long-term goals, you know, easy gets, easy things we can do, low-hanging fruit, whatever the whatever your phrase is. Um, 
and uh, and then we want to get lay ministries to sort of reflect, like uh, conduct an audit, um, think about the infrastructure of the group. Uh, there has been discussion on session. Is Do we need a change in the lay ministries themselves? Is there some sort of, uh, uh, do we need to add some or uh, have more subcommittees or, or, or think, of, think about that in a very broad way based on the feedback that we've gotten here? Um, of course, also consider the church's financial health and think about uh, a an implementation plan to move forward and make sure that we're going to be financially stable into the future. And um, think about how we can build on the tradition that we've already that we already have and engage more members. It, you know, we kept we kept coming back to engaging uh, our membership. Um, I have to say a, a bit of feedback that we got is that some people feel like they're constantly on lay ministries. Some people feel like they have a hard time getting into lay ministries. Certainly we want to know who those people are because we'd like to get them into the lay ministries. And, um, you know, we, we don't want people to feel tired or exhausted or frustrated, uh, from, from being on, you know, working on committees and projects and lay ministries. We want to have people happy and engaged and, and being able to move, move forward. So, uh, you know, as, so in terms of how this gets implemented, we, we, this is just sort of the beginning. This is the vision. And now we need to step forward and, and, and try to, you know, put these things in place and start making progress on doing this. And, and that's, that's also hard work. And, and, and hopefully if you're on a lay ministry, uh, hopefully your liaison to session can bring this to you. You can have discussions about it and figure out how you can move forward, you know, on, on simple things we can do now. It might be buying new equipment uh, so that we can expand our ability to uh, broadcast our services. Um, could be one example, but again, that's a decision that you make on your committee on your uh, lay ministry, and then we can move forward from there. So, so that that's the strategy in terms of how we take the vision and move it forward. Uh, any thoughts or or questions about that? Well, I I would just say this is this is the challenge. This is where mm -hmm. we're missing yes. the road, so to speak. And obviously, having two session members who are on the task force helps although you know your your terms will be up do you have do you envision uh, any tools uh you know our lay ministry is obviously beginning to see we've got to keep these things in mind as we plan our programs and we try to be more engaging and and outreaching but um how about the other lay ministries and you know do you have any tools or ideas for um how how that could happen or what you'll ask session to use in, in making this happen. Um, I, I think each lay ministry will, will reflect on its own and decide, uh, you know, how how is how we are going to move forward. I know that we have not had the opportunity to do that yet and because I'm on property management, I'm the property management liaison, and I don't think we've had an opportunity to sort of reflect and, and think about that. Uh, perhaps you know, a, a lay ministry could decide, you know, based on this and come up with a list of actions that they want to try to take uh, in the short term or the long term. Um, and uh, I, I think that, you know, not all of the uh, strategic goals necessarily apply to every lay ministry, but I also think that it might help to think about if you have concerns to have some sort of, uh, conference across uh you know between lay ministries to think about you know well i'd like to do this but i'm not sure what's possible because you know this steps into another lay ministries area right uh i mean you know perhaps like if you need resources talking to finance about you know what are the kinds of things we might be able to do um you know um i i think that you know property management uh might want to talk to Worship and arts about you know what are other improvements that we can do there, right from the building and applying it to worship and arts. So I, I think um, trying to think beyond your silo is a good thing to do. Um, 
and then also trying to just come up with doing uh, a short and long-term goal uh, based on a, a and, and I encourage you to, like I said, go to the report. I think the report, you have to, you have to Google it right now, but I'm sure we will be posting it online right now. I don't think it's posted on our website, uh, but you can, you can Google the title of it and you'll be, you'll find a copy of it and, and read those there, the more in-depth sections on that rather than the, just these high level bullet points. And I think you get a better feel and a better flow for uh, what the vision is of these strategic goals. Uh, hopefully and, that answers your question, Kate. And Carol, I, I like the I also like the process angle of your question, um, because, you know, as you as you can imagine, this is our five year plan. And so right. we definitely are going to want to, I think, embrace different different tools. I'm going to use your word tools um, at different parts of this journey. Right. And so for for us, I think right now we're. I think we're doing a lot of what I would call like active listening, brainstorming, um, and engagement with the lay ministries right now to understand if like, you know, we bounced all these ideas off of them, right? You're, we're, I'm, I'm a liaison, you know, Doug's a liaison. We're bouncing ideas off people. And, you know, what are people bouncing back to us right away? Are they saying, oh, you know, we're already developing more connectional opportunities because, you know, COVID has gone down. So we're already doing more connectional things and here's what we're doing. And then, you know, so it's an interesting time now. And I will say like, th thank goodness um, uh, that, <laughs> that Linda raised COVID at earlier that, you know, this, this really did shape a lot of our, um, a lot of our brainstorming because we were really emerging from COVID. But um, I will say that, 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 I like your question from that process standpoint, because right now I think there is going to be an arc certainly of how we em embrace this because we really want to fully capitalize on all the people we have that are engaged right now, their ideas, their current work, where their work is heading already. Um, and also to the extent that somebody is like, oh, you want us to tweak what we're doing a little bit or, or, or move in a different direction, you know, like we want to have those conversations now. So then we can get to the point of, I think where you're going, Carol, which is, do we need to add more resources? Do we need to create more um, events or opportunities or, or other things or embed things or, or even create maybe another committee somewhere? Um, and I, I think those that's probably something that I would hope that we'd be moving on to those types of conversations probably by like Q2 of next year, because hopefully we'll have figured out how we can build on what we have already and then move to that next level. Yeah. Jenny has just remarked that we need to have that report on the website readily available. So if we want people to read it. Um, so that's just something that 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 I don't know who does that, the session, the whatever, <laughs> but to make sure that it happens. Elizabeth. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I'll put a link. Um, I'll put a link in the chat right now. Oh, that'll that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Um, that would be helpful. And also, I would hope that, that in addition, I mean, this is always the way groups say, wow. you know, it doesn't have to be more money. Maybe there is more a creative way that we right. reach out um, in addition to addressing our needs. Uh, hopefully that we address them in the most effective way possible to make these things, uh, help these things work. Um, Nancy has, um, yeah, the, the question, Nancy's question, and thank you, Linda. Linda has um, typed in the, the connect, uh, the Google, no, or the connection to the task force um, online uh, right now so that you can find it. But Nancy also says, will the task force continue in a monitoring role? Or does that just devolve to session? I think the the task force has ended, and so we, um, you know, I I can't remember the the procedural term, um, but we've been dismissed, and so now this goes to session to work um, on implementation with the other church leadership. Exactly. Okay. Certainly appreciate your work. Are, are there other 
questions to them. Let me just, could I just share, share a thought for a moment? This is, it's David here. Sure. Yeah, just such a great, um, just gratitude for this group, these three, for Kate and Linda and Doug and the whole group um, and for, for adult ed for including them. Um, I think, I think the, the report was one of the six boxes on the front of the website from early May through August. I think Elizabeth just took it down after four months just to get ready for fall as its sort of own mm. front um, link. But it, it, it needs to stay on the website in some prominent place as we go to a new website next next month. It's I, I love the Isaiah quote that Doug or whoever lifted up that that does um it is a slightly different spiritual emphasis than in 2016, the report where uphold was like coming back as sort of the top um value, so to speak. Um in that you know, coming out of COVID, a lot of the of the feedback was sort of the ta quote unquote tail end of COVID, where um, y y I'm not surprised that 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 shifting something like no one was was wanted everything to stay the same that it was in 2021 and 22, right? I mean, our lack of connection was palpable, and and participation in the life of the church, it's just a different church post COVID for no other reason than. Well, just look at adult ed, right? I mean, we're we're all we're, we're it's a hybrid church. It's a different church, just just location wise, um, and that's one of our areas of diversity. Um, but it's also a different church in terms of um, the nations of origin, the denominational backgrounds. I mean, the, the five of us who plan worship come from five different. If you count Jong as Pastor Jong and, and Nabinger, five different denominations of origin. Um, you know, Presbyterian is one of the five. And we have so many different countries representing the congregation. My only point is in the last 10 years, just to see some of the shifts of the broader church represented in Bradley Hill. So all that plus COVID, plus deep spiritual work that Linda and Kate mentioned in terms of prayer in this really comes through in a report that sort of says we've got a lot of strengths and uphold is not irrelevant. We want to keep those strengths. But there's a little more of a shift on, well, where's the spirit moving us in some ways to reflect what's a different time in the life of the church and, and some different kinds of diversity in the congregation than we've been maybe called to in some past reports. And, and so it's up to all of us then, right, to follow that spirit, right? Because the report is this vision and, and where it goes now will be up to, you know, the baton has been passed from a great group of leaders to to us all and to see where the spirit leads will be exciting. Anyway, thanks. Thank, thank you, David. Um, and thanks to the three of you. I, I just have to share um, my, my personal journey this week because I was looking forward to this presentation and thinking about the journey I've taken as a member of this church. I've been a member for 47, eight years. And I've gone through different time periods in my life as to how engaged I was or was not. And at this point in my life, I absolutely love and embrace the life of the church and the members of the church. It's meant so much to me. And I was in Vermont this last week, wandering through tiny towns and the it, the beauty was, of course, gorgeous. The weather was beautiful. The leaves are are almost there. And but in town after town, there were these lovely white steepled structures, most of which are now historical societies. Yeah. Yeah. the The church yeah. does the evidence of church life was kind of gone. And it just, struck me that I'm so, so grateful for this group and the community that we have and the efforts that we're making to be more diverse, to be more alive, to keep embracing the new things that come to us. And um, I can't thank you all enough for all the work. I know you spent tireless hours um, in making this happen. And and we'll continue to do so, and I hope we can all join together in the coming coming times, uh, days, weeks, and years um, as as a congregation uh, for which I've been most grateful throughout my life. Thank you.
Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Yep. Well said. With us. <clears throat> Thank mm -hmm. you.